Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you are here to learn about using the Viper tools to trade the futures markets, you are in the correct place. First we get to knock our disclaimer out, so let's take care of that so we can get right on to some charts. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar. Other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, all that being said, let's get over here to a 6J chart. Okay, so as I said in the pre-webinar discussion here, let's go over to screen one. Stand by, please. Hey, has anybody ever heard of this? Uh, I, I came up with this, but let's see if you, you believe it's true. I call it the convergence theory. And the reason I came up with that, I coined that, is is I have a theory I developed years ago that everything happens at once. You ever notice that? Like you can have nothing happen for like hours, you know? Quiet, calm, half an hour, hour and a half, two hours longer. And then all of a sudden everything starts, you know, the dog will bark, landscapers start doing something, phone starts ringing, somebody's knocking at the door, postman comes, car alarm goes off. <laughs> you ever notice that? Is that just me? I call it the convergence theory. It means that you go through periods of quiet where nothing happens. And then everything seems to happen at once. <laughs> That's the strangest thing. So my apologies if you hear some landscaping next door. I'm not closing that window. Just fight our way through it. Hey, so does everybody see 6J here? 6J. So let's get let's get on with the topic. You know, I'll just tell you straight up. One of the easiest ways that that I that I look at things to know whether. I should be looking for for uh, for runners or or looking to scalp in the chop is you know the visual clues that are on the chart. Can anybody hear that landscaping thing next door? Because if it's bothering you, I can close the window. Anybody hear it, or you, maybe you don't hear it. No, just show of hands. There he, he stopped doing it. You can hear the landscaping. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you can't hear it. No, nobody can hear it. Okay, good. All right, so let's come back over here. Let's look at a couple of things just real quick. And it's just, it's a, a lot of it's just a visual thing, okay, a visual thing. So, for instance, this is 6J. Uh, we're panning backwards. Here's right now. This uh, You can see that we had uh, some trades breaking up here just recently. This is a few minutes ago. I couldn't catch these because I came and got this chart up a little bit late. But here you see... Let me just show you how I sort of visualize it, and I know a lot of you do too, is you can, you know, here you see you were in a range. So what's the characteristics of being in a range? Well, we know that the mid-band is flat, right? We know that the predictors are lined up pretty clearly at support and resistance levels and flat and sideways predictors. Generally speaking, you'll have this sort of opaque funky color background it won't be green it won't be red and the bars are oscillating between all the colors of red yellow and blue blue yellow red red yellow blue and we're going sideways so it goes without saying that what types of trades are we taking in this area right here is this runner material if you see a market that looks like this Say it's in the morning, late morning, afternoon, evening time, overnight, whenever you're trading. It really doesn't matter what market it is either, does it? Is this runner material here if you're going to trade this range? No. No. This is scalpy, scalpy, scalpy. So it's pretty straightforward. And, and the way you can tell that right away is... Let me just show you how you can tell right away, because I know I know there's going to be comments. Well, armchair quarterback Charles, you know, sitting there all nice and comfy at five o'clock in your little funny office chair. 
taking pot shots at the market. So let's quickly identify when this uptrend is no longer uptrending. You just type in an N or show your hand when you think you know when it's not going up anymore and it's going sideways. In fact, let's do this. Let's let's help you out. Let's help you out. Let's suppose you don't have these lines. Let's take all this stuff off. Let's make it a clean chart. Stand by. Because this is how you can do it. Well, I'm going to try to show you how you can do it in real time. You can actually do it in real time. And it's really easy. It's super, super easy to do. Okay? All right, let me get the chart, clean chart back up. There we go. All right. No question about it. Late morning, 6J was in a run up. Boom, pull back, boom, pull back, boom, pull back, all the way up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we come down. We hit the mid band. We go a little deeper. That would have been late. More, I'm here, most of you know, if you're new or visiting, I'm in California, it's Pacific time down here. 10.48, we're going into 11 a.m. Pacific, so just, just that to your local time zone. All right, so this is what we would call a deep retracement, yes? Technically, we're still in an uptrend, but let's see what happens next. Okay, how about now? Even possibly as far back as here. Double top, Mindy. What are the clues that we're seeing right now on this chart, even with this limited amount of information that would be breadcrumbs to tell us, hey, wait, 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 ho, oh, hey, ho, ho, hold up. Maybe we're not going up anymore. We might be going up to sideways. Right here, what was the clues? Okay, just list them out. Just type them in if you can. Just I'll give you 15, 20 seconds. What are the clues? What What's going on here? Let me blow this up. This is how you do it in real time. There's lots of them. There's some clues here. Predictors. Good. Flat mid-band. Good. Predictors are above and predictors below not moving. Good. So this is what we're talking about, people. This is everybody. Look. Look what's happening here. These are the clues. We have to be like little sort of inspectors, right? What's happening to our friend the mid band here? There's a mid, there's a predictor sitting right here now. What color is the background now? Is it still green? Right here, 1052, 1049, 1050, 1052. What are the clues that are to starting to tell us something's going on here? What's the difference between the mid band and all the bands over here, like that? And what's happening to the mid-band right now, like this? What are the clues here? Yeah, you're getting them. You're getting them, right? Flat mid-band. Predictors all pretty much kind of in the same spot. You're not uh, the, the bands in the, the bands aren't stepping up anymore. It's not a stepping down, stepping up thing. So as early as right here, we knew we were in a range. Now, if we were not going to be in a range, what should happen? This is the opposite of being in the range. What would happen if we don't go into a range? What should happen? Well, the one thing, yeah, higher highs and higher lows. We should get, theoretically speaking, if this was just a deep probe on another leg up, we would get something like this. Blammo, yes? Deep probe, hold support, up you go, trend continuation. Yeah, MG, or you get the reverse. The reverse would be as follows. It would check mid-band, check mid-band, check mid-band, come down, poke to a fresh swing, possibly, yes, come up, and then roll. And it would get a, a back, I would bet background change, and obviously you see you start trading the short side. You'd be trending down now, trend change. Let me continue on. Now, in my view, the next clue, so 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 we have the predictors, we have the flat mid-band, and we have this price action that's kind of sitting like this. The buyers have run out of gas. The buyers make one last sort of feeble attempt to get up to the top, and they can't muster enough to get past there. They don't even get close to here. And look at these predictors just sitting here. So what is this telling you right now? 
When you see this on a market tomorrow morning or whenever you're trading, whatever t tonight, whenever you're trading, and you see this type of price action go from a trend, right, trend, to something that starts looking like this, what do you know is happening? Let's look at it again. Trend. And now we start to see this type of price action like that. Predictors all in the same spot, flat, mid-band, can't break down, can't get back to the top, can't break it. It's not breaking it. We're not getting trend continuation here. What are we doing? Where are we at? We are in a range. Good. Ranges equal what if you're going to trade them? Should I t what am I going to type in here? Range equals what? Uh, runners? Ranges equal runners. I'm going to put it in, right? Runners. Load the boat. Ah, oh, come on, everybody. Scalpies. We all know that. We should know that by now, right? Scalpy scalperoo. And we all know the we all know the rules too. The rules ranges equal scalpies. So we're looking. Oops, what happened there? Mm, silly box. Ranges equal scalpies. We know that you got to have a range that's at least twenty to twenty-five ticks for it to be tradable. Yes. In the case of a, an uptrend going sideways, our primary mode of entry, at least in the beginning, is going to be what? Shorting the top or buying the bottom? Let me for, let me rephrase that. So here's the question. If you're going to scalp the range, which we're all saying we're scalping the range, is your primary mode of entry shorting the top to get in the trade? Or is your primary mode of entry buying the bottom at support to enter the trade? Are you buyer or are you a seller in the range? In this particular condition right here, are you a buyer or a seller? <clears throat> buyer. You're coming off an uptrend, right? It would be the reverse if you're coming off a downtrend, right? If you're coming off a downtrend and the market was selling off, selling off, selling off, and you go into a range and it's hitting its head here at resistance, hitting its head, your, your primary mode of entry is what? Selling short at the top of the range, right? In this case here, you're, you're getting retracements off of a trend move up, so you're buying support. So these are buys down here. This is all buys down here. And then when you get up near anywhere near the, the, the top of the range, just shy of the swing up here, you're fading it a little bit, and you're taking your profits. So you're buying down here, and you're scalping your profits here. No runners in this condition, right? Now, let's contrast this area right here with a couple of different areas where we'll look back on 6J. Let's come over here. Uh, in fact, let's do this. Let me pause the screen. Let's go back and start with the sell-off on 6J. And you can tell me when you think we went into a trend and we were no longer going sideways. All right. Are you ready? All right. Now, this would have been yesterday evening in the Asian session on 6J, where we typically get a lot of... of uh, MG is saying, when you look for scalps, do you set targets at or near the swings or simply number of ticks? It's going to be a function of where those swings are, MG. Yeah. Yeah. So in the case of that other one we looked at where you're coming off the uptrend and you're in upper consolidation range, so you're buying support, you're getting in at the bottom there, you're using your tools. You know, you can do the touch plus, you can buy off the predictor, you can, there's lots of ways to get in, limit order, market order, uh, box it, all manner of different ways to get in at the bottom, right? And then you're, you're fading the top. So if you're, you're anywhere near that swing, you're going to come at least two to five ticks from the, the top of the range to scalp to get out. And it's a function of where the swings are, net, not a set number of ticks. And the reason for that is that those ranges vary. Some can be as tight as, what, 8, 10, 12, 15 ticks. Some can be up around 30 ticks. So it's all a function of that. Let's do a couple exercises together. All right? I'm going to show you some random uh, situations, and you tell me 
what the condition is. I'm just going to flash them up and you tell me. Okay? I'm going to start off real easy and then I'm going to make them really tough. And the reason I'm doing this is so that when you see these in real time, you can pick them out real quick. Ready? Here's the first one. Up, down, or sideways. Just uh, a U. Each one of these is going to be really quick. So a U, D, or S for all these questions. Up, down, or sideways. Okay, good. Up. This one's easy. This one's easy. It's up. Now, second part, part B of same question. Uh, how many we now we all know for those of you that are new we tr we don't trade thrust moves in this case the thrust would be up we trade retracements into support to buy in an uptrend how many long trades are there on this chart right now just type in a number how many long trades are there on this chart you don't have to type in it when they are or what level they are or any of that kind of stuff how many entries are there on this chart? Count them up quickly. I'll give you 20 seconds and type in a number. Let me see. Let me count them myself real quick. One, two, okay, I got a number. I got a number. I got a number. 10 seconds. Type in a number. How many long trades are there on this chart? You don't have to say where or when. How, just a number. Five seconds. Time's almost up. I see some good numbers coming in from everybody. The team's really spo everybody's responsive tonight. Thank you. Appreciate that uh, participation. All right, time's up. Most of you said five. Um, there was a couple of sixes in there. I see Dennis and Eileen had six. Eddie and uh, MG had six. Mark had six. Uh, Mindy actually had seven. And the highest number was Jim S. Hey, Jim, he had eight. Oh, that's a lot. All right, well, let me let me show you. Uh, oh, so let's just take a quick uh, look here, then we'll move on to the next part of the chart. Excuse me. Obviously, we see 11 o'clock, and we know why. This was the Fed yesterday, right? Fed interest rate announcement was here at 11, and we get 6J started moving precipitously to the upside. Trade number one after the Fed was right here. Beautiful textbook mid-band kiss for a long bounce up. That's trade one, right? Everybody sees it. Arguably, you had another retracement that felt just shy of the mid-band right in here for tra long trade number two. Right? See it? Now, if those of you that had five, more than five, like six, I could see where you might make the case that perhaps this was another retracement here <coughs> on the fence, but arguably long trade three. Clearly, there was a mid-band kiss on a yellow bar right here. Long trade four. And the final pullback and kiss was right here for long trade five. Now, for those of you that, that, that saw more than that, perhaps some of these little micro pullbacks you felt were, were sufficient to get in, um, you know, and, and if you thought that, that coming out of this sideways move, perhaps you, you felt that this could have been a mid-band box here that got long, you know, somewhere over here. That might have counted for you, perhaps, which would get you over the five. But basically, in the run, you had five nice pullbacks to get long. One, two, three, four, five. And that last one into the market close there made, made a ton of coin. Put a couple contracts on that, you would have cleaned up on that puppy. All right, so we're going up after the Fed. We know that. Uh, okay, now now what starts happening? You, tell me if you see a change. When you think there's a change... In this market, and I mean change can be change from up to down, up to sideways, or some other change. Consolidation, whatever you feel, you type in a C. I'm going to slowly advance the chart past noon yesterday afternoon. Ready? On 6J. Here we go. Type in a C when you feel something has changed. Coming back to the mid-band. Yellow bars. Okay, we're at 12.19. Let me blow it up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. 
Okay, let me go back. Let me help you out a little bit. I'm going to try to help you out a little bit. Remember? Now, we need some muscle memory here. What did we talk about like five, ten minutes ago on that other part of the chart? Muscle memory. What's the breadcrumbs that the market leaves behind so we can notice? We have to be like little little investigators, thinking all the time. What's the market telling us? Let me go through one more time. Okay, here's 1210. About an hour after the Fed came out with the announcement. Okay, get some yellow bars. Sitting at the mid band. Get some yellow bars sitting at the mid band. What is the market doing right now? How does this look similar to the other part of the chart we looked at a few minutes ago? Here's here, let me help you with a couple other little and these are subtle things, okay? Here's the thing, that's the thing about trading is, and this is why the subtle nuances you have to be focused when you're trading because you know, it's not time to play with your dog. It's not time to make breakfast and go have coffee and then sit around and think you're going to pull the trigger. You've got to stay focused because the market is giving you little clues here. Let me let me share with you. I, I, I see a clue right here. What is this? What is that right there? Let me blow it up. And this little bip is further enhanced by what is going on up here. Predictors all more or less in the same uh, place. The market, in my view, with that little bip, could not muster. This was its feeble attempt to get back up to here, and it couldn't do it. The mid band clearly has flattened out. The predictors are more or less sitting pretty much in the same place, with one firmly right here at the mid band. So when you typed in C when you saw this, I would say that's correct. Because it's a failed attempt to get back to the top. It's clearly not, it can't even get there, let alone take it out, right? Predictors are all lining up at the top and the bottom, and the mid-band is flat. We are starting to consolidate, right? The bulls have run out of gas. The buy programs are not running so much anymore. They're starting to take profits, and there's not enough gas to get take the top out. Let's keep going. How about now? Now, all due respect, you, you don't have to panic in some in some uh, cases like this. Everybody's like, "Well, what am I going to do?" What are you know, gonna... Let's look at when it started to get sideways. I mean, you could make you know some kind of case that we started to consolidate here around 12:20, 12:25, going into 12:30, and here we are all the way at 13. This is an hour. It sat here for an hour doing this. And what I'm trying the, the point I'm trying to make is sometimes when it does this, it takes it sits there for a while and kind of stews. See how it can't get uh, take the top out? It's holding support. We see that. Is it scalpable? Mm, barely. I mean, you know, because you're 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 trying to, you know, if you're trying to buy, fade the bottom, you're getting in here long, right? Trend is still up to sideways, so we're buying support. We talked about that on the last one, right? Primary mode of entry is buying for now. And you fade the top. You're not even getting near the top. So if you're scalping it, you're looking at getting out like right in here. Is there a lot of meat on that bone? What do you think? This is your trade right here. The trade is actually right here. That's it. How many of you would be scalping that? Right there. That, that would be your trades. Buying here. Oops, no, I'm sorry. It'd be a little bit lower. Sorry about that. Right there. Yeah, it's the lower end. Some of you saying, no, I wouldn't. Skinny little chicken thing. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> MG, you're on fire tonight. Skinny little chicken wing with no meat on it. Yeah, you know, by the time you get in, factor in a little bit of slippage, you know, a tick or two here and, uh, and some, and some uh, you know, commissions in there it's there's no there's no meat on that bone probably not, not even worth really scalping all right let's move on i'm going to continue i'm going to do one more one more thing on this chart and then we'll go over to another chart okay are you ready I'm going to continue this one, and then I'll do another one. I, I just found something that I think would be very helpful for everybody. Oops, I lost it. Uh, I lost it. 
<laughs> Give me a second. My apologies, everybody. I hit the wrong thing on the chart and went ski daddle on me. Oh, there we go. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Here's where we were. Now I'm going to advance a little bit more, and, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do another exercise here. You type in a C when you notice, when you think something is starting to change. Ready? Okay, I'm going to start advancing it. Type in a C when you think something has changed. Going bar by bar now. Type in a C when you think something has changed. You don't have to say what changed. All right, it's already happened. And I see a bunch of you typed in C. What was happening right here? We all acknowledge the fact that we are we are uh, up to sideways. We know we're in a range. We're consolidating here, but the background is still green. So technically, we're up to sideways, up slash sideways, correct? We see the predictors all lined up. Mid-band is flat, definition, definition of a range. No more higher lows and highs. Support is holding in here. As we trade the range, we are buying support and scalping it, should you choose to do so with what little chicken meat's left on the bone here, so to speak. But when we go to buy support over here, what happened right here? Here, let me advance a little more and help you out. How about now? What was the, what was the what was the breadcrumb clue here that was starting to tell you that something was changing? Yeah, it was getting higher support. It was getting a higher low. It was it now it was holding the mid band. It's not coming down here anymore. It's not coming down there anymore. It's holding a higher level. This is telling you what. What's the most what's the most likely direction out of a box that sits at a higher low here? Is it up or down? in the situation that you see here. What's the most likely scenario of a mid-band box in a situation like this? Continuation up, yes. So this is telling you that you're getting some strength coming back into the market. The buyers have, have supported this, have, came in and supported this area here, yes. There was profit taking, no question about it. They consolidated, trying to determine what direction to go. It did not break down, it held support. And when you see something like this in a market where it gets it gets stronger and you get a higher low, this is your clue. This is your breadcrumb right here. It's throwing you. This is the bone is throwing you. It's saying, hey, 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 ooh, wake up. Something's changing here. We're getting ready to hit the gas again. Now, the nice thing about this, if you box this or you want to take this trade, now this was late. This is going into the European session and 6-8-J starts to perk up. If you put the box on it, you're getting filled on you get a filled on a close up here and don't feel so scared about it because where is your stop is your stop 12 or 15 ticks way down here you got to put your stop down here for this no 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 put that stop real tight right under that candle breaks that support and goes lower don't worry about it get out of it so what i'm trying to say is this is if these boxes here like this make you nervous they should actually make you a little less nervous because, first of all, you're trading in the direction of the trend, which is up. You're looking to get long, so you would not have short activated here. Even if it did go lower and never filled at the top, you're not even in it, so it doesn't matter, right? And if you do get filled, if you had it boxed, you can see it'd be filled on the close of this bar probably right here, long. And then you, you don't, you know, if, if OT puts a if your default is 10, 12, 15 ticks and the puppy sit and wait on here somewhere, what do you do? You drag that puppy right back up. And then when she goes up and you get the scalpy off here, uh, now you start trailing. Everybody see that? Everybody see what I'm showing here? All right, now let's look. Let's see if we got any kind of trend changes occur. I'm going to get off this. I'm going to start. If there's no question on this, I'm going to clean this chart off. Any questions? Nope. Okay, clean chart. 
because I'm going to go show something else real quick here. Where is the clean drawing tools? Remove all. Removes all drawing objects. Okay. Clean chart. Pause the screen. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of the trend continuation, but I'll just quickly snapshot it back up here, and you can see that, uh, and I'll orient you back to where you're at so you don't get lost on the chart. Here was the box we just did uh, over here. This is the Asian se session yesterday on 6J. Here's the box we just drew when I cleaned the chart off. So it was a nice trend continuation. You push up, you get a fresh swing, you come back, mid-band kiss, mid-band bounce, retracements. All right, now now I'm going to slowly advance uh, advance this chart now. And when you think there's a trend change, type in TC for trend change. Ready? Okay, here we go. I'm going to slowly advance the chart bar by bar and TC for trend change. When you think the market has changed trends, you type in TC. Let me blow it up on the right edge so you can see a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, all you, uh, I see almost everybody's in by now. Okay, now this is this is this this particular area can be a little confusing for some traders, and I understand it. We've talked about it in tons of webinars, a hundred million times. Well, maybe not a hundred million, but a lot, <laughs> probably a hundred. It's this issue right here. Okay, so when you're in a long protracted uptrend, oh gosh darn it, I lost it again. This uh, chart's being a little squirrely tonight. <laughs> Where in the heck did you go? This chart's driving me nuts. Ah, uh, you're killing me. What's today? Today's the 26th, 27th? 27th? trying to get back to where I was. Uh, my apologies, everybody. This, this chart's killing me. You're killing me! Ah, here we go. All right, let me blow this back up. My, my, my apologies, everybody. Okay, I'm going to go back here and, um, and, 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 and explain something real quick. Just to orient you again, I had to pause the screen. Here was the long trade that we boxed. We talked about, you remember the range? We had the uptrend, buying support. We were in a range, sideways predictor, flat mid-band. We had the higher low, the box. We got long, re-entered, long, long, long. Now, back now to back to the right edge. So I, I think visually, and, and I understand this, where uh, the challenge is with, with, uh, with, uh, trend changes is this notion of what's called a deep probe. We used to call it a deep probe. We call it a phantom now. But essentially it's this. It's, 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 it's profit taking that takes the market below the mid band, which had held pretty much on all prior pullbacks. And so we get concerned that this could be a trend change when we come to the outermost band here, right? The way we teach this from a technical point of view at this point in time it's considered a deep retracement in a phantom trade, so you can still buy this. When you, when, if and when you buy, and I know some of you are uncomfortable buying here for several reasons. First of all, the bars have turned red. You have a red stealth. The mid band is starting to slightly stair step down. You have a red background, and it's starting to look like it wants to head down, yes? So I understand that, and I understand that when this happens, you are very nervous buying down here. Is that true? Is that a fair statement? Visually, the clues are telling you, hey, this thing might be going the other way. So stepping in here to buy is a nervous thing to do. I see a bunch of yeses. I get that. I know that. We know that. Um, but here's the thing. Look, if you take this outermost, it, it, it's a really simple trade if you, if you start to play with it a little bit. Sometimes they really pay off. Throw a little box on it. If it pops up and fills you long, 
just like this other trade over here at this box. I, remember what you said? Do you need a big 12, 10, 12, 15 tick stop? No, 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 no. You're filled long on that bar right there. Should you choose to take it? And where are you going to put your stop? Where's your initial stop going to go? Way down here somewhere? No, 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 no. No, just under the swing. That's right, Mark. Right here. So your risk is pretty small. Probably less than 10 ticks. Now, where's your target? If you buy phantom trades on a deep retracement after a trend, where what is your target? Generally speaking, what is your target going to be? Where are you expecting it to go back to from this point at the outermost band? Where where should it theoretically go to? Right, mid band. So that's always the case here on a phantom trade, right? You're looking for it to try to get back up to here. That old reversion to the mean thinking it, it, it comes into play. And furthermore, after if if you choose not to buy the phantom trade, which by the way I have to say is perfectly okay. Look, phantom trades aren't for everybody. We show all kind of trades on these charts. We show you know how to trade ranges, mid band boxes, all sorts of trades. There's phantom trades. There's tons of trades all over the place. But look, what the key for your success is to embrace the ones that you like and get good at those. If phantom isn't in your in your bailiwick, don't take it. Right? You don't have to take every single trade right there. But if you don't take it and it comes up to the mid band, what might you be thinking? If and when it gets up into this area right here, off of this bounce, which it's doing, let me advance a couple of more bars. That's exact that's precisely what it's doing. So the long trade actually worked out here. Right? See that? You could look for a potential roll short. Yes. Good. Adam, who typed that in? Uh, MG, Mark, Jim S, and Adam. Yes, exactly. Everybody. Look, you know, the clues are starting to stack up here. Here, let's, get, let's give us a few more bars here. At what point in here did you become convinced that we were no longer probably in an uptrend? Let me give you a couple of spots. Here to here, let's call that area A. Or when you got a second shot at it and it came up here and kissed just shy of the uh, 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 mid-band. Area B. Let me let me just continue this on down. Yeah, B. B was much more compelling uh, because it, the only reason I say that is is because is because of this right here. See how this didn't get down to check this. It, and, and if this was a more convincing uh, uh, early stage of a trend change to the downside, you could make the argument that it should get at least to here and possibly break it. And it didn't. It got to here. So when you're you're we you know we have different terms for this when you're kind of under the mid band after after a long you know hundred plus tick run up and you're 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 consolidating under the mid band like this, you can look at this both ways. You really can. You can look at this both ways. Looking at it both ways meaning that this could be a deep retracement on another leg up, or given the red background, the stair stepping down, the predictor starting to step down lower highs and starting to get lower lows yes i'm looking to short here with a tight stop just above the mid band you're getting short on rollovers here now okay i'm going to advance the chart any questions before we move on on that i know this is a confusing area i know you know it's really easy when a market is trending up and it pulls and kisses the mid band and we get in we make a ton of money life is good but you know what all markets don't behave like that Um, I, let's see, would you have shorted the mid-band break at 2038? In my view here, MG, he's asking, would you have shorted this? Uh, I, I, I think, you know, you, you'd have to go back and sort of look at it in real time to know whether you, you know, it would, have thrown, would have thrown a box on there and allowed it to take the short side. Probably not in real time. Probably not.
because at the time that this is happening, you know, you don't know when 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 the bars are pulling back that this could just turn out that this could turn out to be another, you know, box like any one of these over here when it's happening, right? Now the exception would be NASI at the open. Yeah, Adam. Yeah, the exception to that would be Nasdaq and some of the equity markets right at the open in that first 30 minutes when they're flipping up and flipping down and and reversing and V bottoms and double tops. Absolutely. That's a different situation. This is 6J in the in the uh, in the uh, Asian session, so it's a little bit of a different situation here. Um, well, let me let me speak to your question. Let me speak to Peter. Let me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show that reveal that question just yet, but I am going to address it. Uh, and I'll, sir, Peter, I'll circle back to that uh, and answer it very definitely because I know that's what people are thinking. All right, so here we go. So we pull up. Where are we at here? Let me, let me unpause the chart. Okay, there's the two two kisses of the mid band. We roll. We can see area. Everybody voted area B. Go ahead and get short. Take the short. You're in it. Now. Let's say that you miss – well, obviously, you probably definitely miss this one. And let's say you miss this one. And let's say you definitely miss this one. You were asleep. You weren't awake. You are – whatever, making a sandwich, and you missed it. What are you going to do now? You're in the middle of the Asian session. You're wide awake. You drank a whole pot of coffee. You can't go to sleep. You got to trade. You got to trade. And your instrument of choice is 6J. You're an insomniac at this point, staring at this chart. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Sell down here? You're, you just turn the chart on. You just turn the chart on, and it looks like this. Market short right there. Bam. Get in that next leg down. Take a shower and walk away, Dennis. <laughs> Wait for a retracement. All right, this is a, this is a two-part question. In the current condition, on the retracement, and every single one of you has typed in, wait for the retracement to short a rollover. Yes, that's precisely. The trend is down. We all agree that it's flipped, and now we're looking for shorts. Is this more of a lobe to the boat situation, or is this scalpy time? Based on what you see right here, is this load the boat time or scalpy time? L for load the boat, S for scalpy. And this is answering your question, Peter, from a couple of minutes ago. Load her up, scalp her down. What say you, team? Well, we got a mixed we got a mixed bag here. This is kind of surprising. I thought we would have Okay, look, if you're going to leverage up, now I'm not saying throw 20 contracts just because it broke that swing. That's not what I'm saying, okay? That's not that's it's broke primary support, that's true. I see a whole slew of Ls with a couple of years saying scalps. Just to be clear about this, okay? If you're going to use leverage, we've talked about this. And look for runners. If you're looking for leverage in runners, the condition to do so is, and we all know this, not here. This is scalpy time USA. Keep the leverage light, one or two contracts, scalping in and out, even if you're trading it at all. In trend moves, we're looking to scalp or load the boat on retracements. In other words, are you going to take that pullback on this big, huge run and choke it off with a with an eight tick target? Are you gonna choke that trade off with an eight tick target? Is that what you're doing? Scalpies, scalpies? No, this is runner time. When you are in a trend, it is runner time. Runny, run, 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 load it up. Let's go back over here. Trend continuation, we talked about that. Trend reversal, no man's land under the mid band, bouncing back and forth. We're getting lower highs, we're looking for shorts. We miss area B coming back here. We miss it. Comes up, breaks down, area B traders. 
I know everybody's saying, I want to get back to the mid-band. Still not doing it. Okay, you ready? Area B, your you're in, you're, you insomniacs are going crazy. It's driving you nuts. You're here at midnight, still staring at it. Your eyes are all bloodshot. You're half asleep. Asian session unfolding. What are you going to do? Go to bed? You can't. You drank another pot of coffee. And that had a double shot of espresso in it. Okay, hold on. What's going on here? Wait a minute. Wait, wait for it. Wait. What's, what, wait a minute, what is that? What's happening right here? What is this? What is that? Here, I'll blow it up. What's going on there, you insomniacs? Hmm? This is the retracement you've been looking for, isn't it? Fastball down the middle of the strike zone, Adam says. Here, let me advance a little bit more. What do you think now? All right, let's go back and talk about this retracement. Everybody said, "Go ahead and box it and take the short," I, and, and that, that's an obvious. That, uh, that's an obvious. That's that's a that's lob the ball in the middle of the strike zone, hit it out of the park kind of deal. <clears throat> But what would be the clues, going back to the notion of breadcrumbs, that would, indica that would indi indicate to us that we want to probably use some leverage and we want to deploy runners? What are the clues that are going on here that are telling us that that might be a good consideration as opposed to scalping, choking off, short targets i mean yeah you could you could say well charles you know you still want to pull one off at eight ticks that's true you know when you got done here you could pull a scalpy no question about it what's going on here what's what are the visual clues mid band stepping down mark prior swing stair stepping down mid band lower highs Yeah, I mean, you know, everything is in your favor, right? Everything in this market is completely in the favor of the shorts. The sellers are in control. The sell programs are running the boat right here, okay? The, the market's stair-stepping down. The background is deeply red, no question about it. Mid-band is red. Bars are red. Lower lows, lower highs. This is, this. if you were going to pick a sweet spot to load the boat, that would be it right there. And go for the runners. Because by this point here, you can see that there is no question that we're in a sell-off. Everything is in your favor. Predictors are dropping. This is where you get ready to, to, to take some coin. You put your leverage up a little bit more if you're used to one or two. Maybe you put three, maybe four on. You can pull two off at the scalpy if you want to and let two ride. This is something you should practice in sim. I don't suggest that if you're still learning the, the concept of leverage and runners, don't go take your live account and throw 10 lot on it tomorrow and hope that you get a, a 100 tick move. That, that's unrealistic. You've got to practice this and you got to look for it. Same with the long trades over here. I mean, after the Fed announcement, it was running up. There was no question about it. I mean, each one of these was just textbook, textbook pullback. This could, you could easily double your leverage on these runners, no question about it. And sure enough, they all the markets did this. Most of them did. They flipped and ran all the right. Look at it, all the way back down. Each one of these retracements was a beautiful short. Short, 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 mid-band box kiss, perfect textbook rollover short, bam, right there. Another one, another one starts to run out of gas, and then you get a deep phantom retracement up into here. See that? All morning, on back on down. Use some leverage, load the boat, go for runners. When you're consolidating in tight ranges, it's scalpy time. That's how you know. Everybody can see you. Here, let me just see if I can try to get all this on one screen. In fact, let me, I've already spoke my piece. Let me just, let me just clean the chart off again with all my little scribbles. There.
And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just hide those temporarily. I mean, you can see, you know, you have the benefit of hindsight here, but you can, well, I showed you how to see it in real time. Up, consolidation, up, trend reversal, down. Yeah, a couple of people want to see a NASI chart before we wrap. Uh, and I'm going to do that right now. I'll pop a couple more charts. I don't want to spend all night on this thing, but it, there was there was some good examples of lots of things here I wanted to cover. RTY and NASI are on the move. Okay, stand by. Don't panic. Don't panic. Hold on. We'll get the we'll get them up. We'll get them up. Let's get Nazaru up here real quick. See what old Nazaru is up to. We'll look at now, and we'll go back and look at Nazi in the morning earlier. Okay. Uh, data loading. Stand by. Ah. Uh. Oh, gee, many Christmas. Look at Nazi selling off. Yeah, you're right. Who who said that? Was that you, Mary? I think that was you, Mary. I said, look at Nazi. Good call. Look at this thing. This is the close right over here in California, 1 o'clock Pacific. Look at how she just fell off the map here right at the close. Bam, 1301. Look at all those bars print. That's really not tradable. I mean, here's, here's, here's 1259. Here's 1 o'clock. Here's 101. Market's closing. This thing just fell off the map, and then you more or less went sideways up until right over here. Still selling off. I'll tell you, Nazi had some some wild moves uh, over the past uh, few days, uh, and you 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 know I think Gary said in the room a few times that if you're going to trade Nasdaq, you know in your in your little repertoire of trading instruments, you got to really be focused on that puppy. Because she's a stern taskmaster. If you turn away, it can bip right in your face real fast. I mean, you can see right here that it was starting to roll over and head down, mainly because of these swings that were starting to act like this. Whenever you see, and we talked about this earlier on the 6J chart, right? I mean, this is the type of price pattern you can look for when the market's starting to tell you it's getting weak, right? See? See how it can't get back up? Comes down, tries to hold support. Can't get above that swing. I'm not going to do them all. You get the idea. A little lower, a little lower. I mean, as if this was happening in real time, you could tell that the pressure is building to do what? Blammo. Take her down. That's right. Let's go back and look at the morning and see what opportunities we had on NASDAQ. I'll go back uh, right around the open and we'll, and we'll inch it forward talk about it okay man there's a lot of bars on this thing holy cow gee many christmas she had some pretty wild moves oh excuse me hold on wait a second please all right stand by Sorry about that. I had to pick that up. Um, let's go back here. Uh, okay. Uh, where are we at here? Hey, Merry Christmas. This is 10 o'clock. Look at all these bars. This is, 10 this is just 10 o'clock. I'm just going to pause it here. You, you know, you can see this is what NASDAQ does all the time. You know, you get these periods where it's punctuated with, with, with some sideways consolidation. You're kind of not sure. Is it going to go up? Is it going to start heading back down? What? And then, then the pressure builds, pressure builds, and then she just, she just down, she goes. But, you know, you might look at this in retrospect and say, wow, you know, that looks like it made a lot of money. It dropped, I don't know, 80 ticks or whatever. But, you know, each one of these thrust moves, and this is the characteristic of NASDAQ right now, okay, each thrust move is met with what? Yeah, some violent short covering that pushes this thing right back in your face. And it doesn't respect the mid-band all the time either, does it? See that? You get a violent thrust. Blammo. Clearly we're heading down. 
And then what does it do? Woo! Right back in your face. Just all the way down. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, it's so fast. It's sometimes almost, you know, it's the algorithm. It's the algorithm. It's all computerized. It's high frequency trading. It's moved from the stock markets into futures. That's what it's done. It's done that. I mean, you can see it. You know, the 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 pools of liquidity are looking for places to go. You know, they've milked the stock market for years with their HF, HFT algos, and now they're looking for other outlets. And so they're starting to move into the futures markets, and one of the first places they've gone is, is NASDAQ. Let's come back and look at the open here. That's why sometimes, you know, most of you know I traded, I traded, I, tr I used to trade NASDAQ very, very heavily. I would almost exclusively focus on it and leverage up very, very heavily on it. But now with this HFT, phew, it's tough. That's why you don't hear me making many NASI calls. You know, occasionally I'll make a call if I see something that looks really good. Here's 6.30 right here. So here's what I'm talking about. In the first seven minutes of market action, uh, you know, you, you might say, well, yeah, I think we had a mid-man box when we caught this short. I, I do recall that. But just as soon as you hit that bottom at 6.37, look what the, look what the thing does. Bam! Right back in your face. Look at this. It wasn't really until you got over here around 7 o'clock when you started to get some kind of normal, at least semi-normal movement with this long break to the upside right here that I think we caught in the room, as I recall. I think I caught part. I think I caught that one. I'm trying to remember. That was a lot of trades. But, yeah, you know, I, I, I YM, if you like YM, it's a lot smoother. Um, doesn't make near as much money. Um, the Russell's very smooth. Russell was very methodical today. Just beautiful moves. Oil had some moves. Gold had a couple of moves. You got caught in that short pullback, Adam, right up in your face. Yeah, let's continue on down here. Let's see when she starts to starts to starts to plane out and become normal again. Still pretty choppy here. And then about nine nine thirty, I don't know what happened here. There might have been some kind of an announcement or something. She just gets power slammed all the way back down. But that wasn't the end of it. I was, I think I was watching part of this. Comes all the way down. You get a little free trace. You had a potential short entry here. But look, just to, just to, just to explain this. Look, I mean, we all see the short box at the mid band here. But you know, to level set some expectations, you're talking about the retrace occurring at 6:32, 6:33, and the thing rolled over at right around 6:34. You had about a minute or less to draw that box. And then you had another one right here. You got to be quick, quick and dirty. When Nasdaq's moving, you get it, you get in the way and you get on the train in the right direction or it's going to run you over. And would you leverage that up? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it looks like here, you know, 940, 942, it looks like it's going to do a trend change back to the upside like this. And then they roll the thing over, and what do they do? Yeah, drop the thing another, you know, 90 ticks like that. You only got one chance of a retrace for an entry right here. The thing was a woolly beast. I don't know if you could have traded that. Uh, Mindy, you're, you're looking at RTY. Um, yeah, you know, the volume's coming up on that. I've noticed it's, it's been trading like three, 4,000 a lot in the course of the day, which is right about where EMD is. So you might still get some slippage on RTY. Most of you know RTY is the Russell that has come to trade on the CME uh, data feed. But the volume isn't quite there, and the spreads are pretty big. Uh, let's, let's pull it up right now see what she's trading at real quick. I'm going to personally hold off on it. They say that the Russell, the TF, will stay on ice for another year. I think they're talking about not taking that down until, like, next June. You know, so it's a, you can still trade TF. TF still has great volume. Uh, let's see where our TY is right now. See, here, let me just let me just show you right here real quick. Here's a CME group site. Here's the equities right here in this little box. I mean, you know, this is since the market close. Um, you know, ES has almost 20,000 lot. NASI's got six. You know, 
Wyoming's got thirty, it's almost thirty-five hundred lot, and and look at the numbers on EMD and 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 uh, an old Roosty Bird, the new RTY here, seventy-three, and somebody's saying that the spread is three to four ticks. You know, so it's costing you four ticks plus commission just to get in the trade, four ticks plus commission to get out. If you had a ten tick trade, you broke even. <laughs> That's assuming you get filled. Yeah, not not. Uh, for me personally, it's not something I'm going to look at until that volume gets up, at least closer to YM levels, you know, and those spreads come down to one tick. I think that's when we're going to start looking at getting more serious about that. Probably later this year, maybe even early next year. I don't think we'll have to wait all the way till next June. I think that I think eventually you give it three, four months, probably later in the fall, this volume will start really kicking up, I think. Get some more uh, interest in it. Um, uh, six J is six and a quarter, Mary. Six and a quarter a tick. Six and a quarter a tick on six J. If you want to play around after hours, drink a pot of coffee, have some espresso, and uh, practice your trading. It's a good little practice uh, practice trader. Uh, if you haven't traded it before, I don't know that I put put any kind of size on it just yet. Listen, we're uh, we're running over a little bit. I'm gonna I need to get going. Let me stop.